tunnel strategy hasn't been completed. Uh, the work has really commenced on the tunnel strategy, and that work is likely to occur around October, in October. Part of the aspect of that is the, the work on the key route network. There's a, a group being set up and working on that with the, all the districts and Mersey travel, and some of the outcomes of that cut across parts of that, and that's what the, in part, what some of the delays occur. So the revised strategy is back on schedule. services built to include parliament and some work with additional um, options for powers and some of what is currently done by the traffic commission could transfer to us at a local level, particularly things like bus service registration uh, requirements and things like that. So there is the potential for that kind of direction of, of travel. Yeah. Okay. Um, I've now got Natalie and Les. I just want to pick up on the uh, key performance in terms of four punctuality on the very uh, the ten minute frequency, not, not, not meeting the performance. Given the fact that the underground is going to be out of commission in January for six months, um, it worries me because I would have thought that the ferries are going to be having a greater emphasis in those six months. And it seems to me it's a golden opportunity for us to reintroduce new uh, patronage to the ferries over this time. And I'm thinking about people who, who use bikes that now can't get them on the trains. We know they can't 
driving, uh, riding through the tunnel through uh, the main times of the day. So the only other alternative is, is the ferries. So that six months is going to be quite um, arduous to try and get backwards and forwards across the, 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 the river for some people. Are we doing something? I'm sure we are. Uh, to increase the ferry uh, frequencies and obviously providing that service, hopefully gaining new patronage while we can. Oh, we don't have to. Uh, I suppose the, the first thing, uh, when we do the uh, presentation now is on the impact of the South Traffic Hills, one of the aspects is it's six week closure at the front of that program and three week full closure at the back of that program. So it won't be surprising between that period for what
relate to the outputs, which is the performance information, what we've actually done so we can get a, hopefully a, a rounded picture of our resources and how they're deployed and to what effect they're deployed. They're, um, deployed. This is really a summary of the uh, revenue position at the end of last year and the capital programme. There'll be, you'll be aware that it's the end of the financial year, the full statement of the council is being produced is on the website and that will come to an end in due course once it's been audited. Um, so this really is more of a, a, a snapshot at the end of the year. And what it's showing is uh, consistency with the financial reports that we've received periodically through the year that um, in revenue terms have been an underspend of uh, 3.7 million against our, our revisions to budget at the end of the year and set in the table of the need with a summary of the areas where those underspends occurred. Uh, we are, we're not reporting, and, and again, it's helpful, that's the point of this, this process, that you've received the performance information. The, the financial information uh, has not had an impact on our ability to deliver the corporate priorities and the corporate plan last year. In service, service by service summary, um, clearly a, a good example of where we, we, we spent last year uh, in a managed way is the rolling stock project. Now that's a long project and that simply rolls forward into the current year. Um, the project team were not engaged directly in procurement activities that they're engaged in now, so a lot of that spend has to come into, into this year. Um, and the bus service, which again is another significant, but although quite a small percentage of the overall budget, is to do with the, the bus strategy and, and network reviews and you know a, achieving certain savings last year slightly ahead of time, which makes it easier for a strategy to be delivered in this year and, and next. Um, again, tunnels, which is, is a, it's very large, but again a relatively small percentage of the overall budget. Is, a, is, an, inc is a, an excess of income over that which we originally predicted, although bear in mind that income is to combine authorities absolutely right in those travels. Uh, that's to do with increased usage of the tunnel, it's not to do with anything, any changes to tolls or any operational changes. It's, it's, it's principally around additional um, growth in traffic in certain categories of vehicle. Um, and then spread again throughout that table are a number of efficiencies uh, that, have, that are reflected in savings throughout the year. Clearly, motor travel continues to be on the drive to improve our efficiency and take unnecessary costs out of the business through efficient processes, better procurement, thinking about um, what we commission and how we commission it. And again, that's reflected in, in, that, in, in that underspend at year end which in itself is then reflected in that 3.7. Some of which will go into balances to be used this year, where something has just slipped from one year to the next. Rolling stock being the most significant one of those. Some of it is reflected in a reduced, uh, in a reduced requirement from the combined authority for grants, uh, which in turn helps the combined authority reduce the transport levy. Uh, and it is, it is in principle, it's related to our medium term financial strategy and our ability to achieve those financial targets uh, over the medium term this year and next year in principle. The capital programme is, uh, is also included in the report. It's obviously an extremely important element of both the performance and the financial see that the capital programme itself, if you use the very crude measure of percentage spent in the year, is, um, in, we recall previous years, is much improved uh, in terms of ma major schemes and most significant schemes, is that 84% of those schemes were, were uh, delivered as such within the year if you use the measure of spend. The, uh, I mean, <coughs> Shane can no doubt go through the detail scheme by scheme, you'll we'll see some very significant schemes in the last year, such as Kirby Bus Station and, and Alton Kerr and Queen Square, and even recognise them. So the report shows the performance. 
think as well as an improved focus on delivery, though, I think it's important to also recognise that more effort went in at the planning stage last year than, 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 than um, well, not previously, but we put an awful lot of effort into the planning stage to make sure that what went into the capital programme was really what we could deliver and um, was of a scale that the organisation could manage and was focused on achieving those corporate priorities. So we put more effort into making the capital programme deliverable, sensible and affordable and also then focused on the delivery. I think hopefully that presents quite a positive picture of the capital programme last year. Um, again, happy to answer any questions and, and change the management is um, highly technical. It's the capital charges, um, so it's, it's, it's um, non-cash items such as depreciation. But it's also um, it's how we manage the financial relationship between Mercy Travel and the combined authority in terms of the reserves. So effectively, that in what looks like an overspend on funds management is in effect Mersey Travel um, replenishing its reserves in the year. So it's, it, it's a transfer of revenue into reserves. Some of those reserves are combined authorities and some of them are Mersey Travel. So we, we have to reflect it in the accounts. Um, it, it isn't money going out of the organisation. In effect, the underspends that through services and when they get transferred into reserves, that's reflected in the um, in that funds management line. There are some elements of funds management though that are cash. Um, an important one is the repayment of debt, of external debt. Um, that did not go up last year, but that was in line with, with our predictions. And also treasury management, which is treasury management income that we receive from our investments. And last year, Mersey Travel and the Combined Authority, it's Mersey Travel Finance staff that managed this on behalf of the Combined Authority, um, did really well in terms of what we achieved from our investments, considering that the environment we're investing in is not great at the moment, and it wasn't last year, it's a lot worse this year since, uh, since Brexit, uh, just in terms of you know, interest rates that are prevailing at the moment. Because we had an awful lot of Funds to manage on behalf of the combined a lot of cash. The yield was actually quite quite good. Um, if if it's if it's helpful, next time we present this report, I can um, either either offline or within we can explain a little bit more about funds management because it, it is in, it's a big number on this report. It's important that, that members understand it. Uh, however, again, just to stress, it does not mean that. More that the money's gone out of the collective group combined authority of the travel. Anything further on what's to ask? Uh, Harry? <coughs> just, just a clarification, John, on page 26 of 622. Uh, it uh, describes the division. And uh, it says, uh, a small loss when it goes to the city. Um, phraseology. When we concessionary travel is, um, as most people understand it and should understand, is the concessionary travel scheme. For budgetary terms, and this has slipped into the report, we include prepaid ticketing with concessionary travel. Um, and what that should say is that it's a small overspend has occurred in concessionary travel and prepaid tickets because the volume of prepaid tickets that we sold has reduced quite significantly last year. Um, there's no net impact on Mersey travel because we distribute, it comes into the organisation and then it goes out to the organisation to, um, to the bus operators typically because we've collected less, we've been distributing 
less. That, it, it, it's not well worded. Um, it, it does relate to prepaid tickets rather than concession travel. Obviously, there is no income associated with concession travel. And I think it's just important to underline that the reason that we sold less uh, prepaid tickets, predominantly but not exclusively, because a lot of young people switched to my ticket, uh, which effectively something retailed solely by the bus companies, rather than buying save ways that were coming through our books originally. So there isn't actually less people travelling, it's just purely the, the switch of those tickets, um, young people particularly, to using that effectively. Um, goes to the, the main reason why it's gone that way. Steve?
effectively as a prospectus of how rail services across North Wales and into North West England should be significantly improved. And it highlights all the kind of things that we as a city region have been asking for for a long time with regards to our connectivity by rail into North Wales. So things like uh, new and improved services across the whole curve. But specifically to the basis of Rex, it does focus squarely on the fact that we should be targeting at least a half hourly service on that line. And one of the things that, again, I think is really, really opportune is that as a work stream is seen as what should be focused on as a quick win. Now, in railway terms, a quick win isn't something that's going to happen next week, but it is something that collectively we can all work together on to try to improve in the next few years. So I actually think as it's all coming together, uh, we do have a genuine opportunity to move something on and the improvement for the people along that line, but obviously for everyone that potentially connect, can connect along that line because it's a key corridor for the city region and the whole of the sort of North Wales into North West. Look. Jeff? I guess again, as a client from a real standpoint, I mean, yes, the, the line is very much regarded as a Cinderella line. I need to say that I just agree with everything that's been said. I mean, it is, it is a line that is, that is ripe for development. Um, it, we've, we're seeing these sides sort of blossom in red, so uh, lots of houses, lots of uh, businesses coming there. And what Steve said about the, you know, obviously we in Wirral, we need that industry, we need that connectivity coming through into Wirral, and this is one way. Um, what he made, Liam, yeah, it is a quick way. It is a good one uh, to be uh, concentrated on, and I, and I congratulate the officers for actually bringing this report forward and, and wholly support it. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Uh, when we look back over what, seven years or so, I mean, this has been on the cards for a long, long time since people are like on this committee. Because I think this demonstrates the strength and the commitment of this committee, Mersey Travel, because although it's Mersey Travel, they're supposed to be looking basically focused on the Mersey side thing, you know, our eyes are much further. You only go look at the links, but they're looking at Ed Boat Lane, we're looking at Ashton, we're looking at other places. We look far and wide to engage other people. And we, on these, on many of these things, we have taken the lead to sort of encourage and engage these other people to sort of open their eyes to see what the, the prospect could be for them and their communities. Well, I think it's a congratulations to 
Yeah, there's no um, urgent AOB, so thank you for your attendance. We shall see you at the next committee in September. And